Hey y'all, welcome back to Bourbon on the Brain, and today we're going to be having a little discussion. Uh, we're going to try and start sort of a podcast series where, you know, we just talk about certain things, um, and the thing that we're going to talk about today is, it's sort of a round-robin topic specifically around collecting bourbon. Now, this is a this is a really interesting subject for me, and I'll dive into why a little bit later on. Um, but the reason why it's so interesting to me is I had a cousin come in. So my one of my cousins is getting married and we had cousins come in from out of town. And one of my cousins is from Kentucky and is a self-pronounced Kentucky bourbon snob. Now, what that means, anybody's guess, really. But his definition of that is he's very, very Kentucky-centric in his bourbon. So he doesn't really like anything that's produced outside of Kentucky. He thinks that it's not a, a purist version of bourbon. He doesn't really like barrel-finished bourbons because he thinks that a true Kentucky bourbon by law shouldn't be a barrel-finished. But... You know, that's that's one person's opinion. And he is very... He does have a very developed palate. So he came over a couple of days ago, and I put on a bourbon tasting for him. And he saw my collection. He saw everything I have displayed. And it was very interesting to listen to his opinion on everything that I had. So when he first walked in... The first thing that drew his attention was my bottle of Elmer T. Lee. And it really surprised me because for me, for somebody that's collecting out in California, um, Elmer T. Lee would not be the first thing that my attention would draw to. It's it's a nice bourbon. It's a relatively expensive bourbon. But it's, it's a well-known eh, so to speak. You know, it's probably around $300. I, I guess if, if you're somebody from Kentucky, Elmer T. Lee is just, I don't know. My opinion of it is slightly higher than Blanton's. So I was just, it caught me off guard. And so we, we kind of went through, we did my tasting. Um, I had, I prepared a four part tasting for him. I prepared... Um, Bardstown Discovery Series number 8, 13th Century, their barrel release, um, Blood Oath Pact 8, uh, and Smoke Eye Hill Barrel Proof that just won the Ascot Award. So it was very interesting to hear his opinions on what he did and didn't like. But after the tasting was over, we sort of went back through and he was looking at my collection and I probably have about 50 bottles on display. The rest of them are, you know, hidden behind cabinets. And he was kind of looking through it and he said, he said something that subconsciously I knew, but I've never really vocalized before. He said, you don't have anything on here that, the, that a normal bourbon drinker would know. And I thought about it for a second and... I realized that he's right. And he went on to say, he said, you don't have any bottles of Elijah Craig or Knob Creek or things like that. He said, even like their higher end bottles, like an Elijah Craig 18 year, you don't have anything like that. And I said, well, here's the situation. The way I believe in bourbon, if you have a bottle like Elijah Craig 18 year that costs $170 a total wine, let's just say. And you have the brand new release of Bardstown Discovery Series for $160. There's no question what I'm going to spend my money on. And it's not going to be Elijah Craig. That's not to say the Elijah Craig isn't good. It is. But it's the same thing. You're getting the Elijah Craig 18 year. You know exactly what it is. And my philosophy is that I want stuff that nobody knows what they taste like. I want stuff that... I can put on display and people are going to ask, what is that? I want to try that. Not, oh, I've had that. That's really good. And that's sort of my whole philosophy when it comes to bourbon tasting and bourbon collecting. 
I don't mind spending the money as long as it's for something that I've never tried before that has a reputation. And not even has a reputation. I mean, you know, there's plenty of stuff that I've tr that I've bought that I've spent money on that I've never even heard of before. This the 13th century is a perfect example. But I want people to look at my shelf and not see a bunch of the same stuff that they see on every bourbon collector shelf because I don't consider myself a collector. I, other people call me a collector, um, but I don't consider myself a collector. What I consider myself is somebody who enjoys drinking diverse and unique bourbons. And I display those bottles as I'm drinking them. I don't display unopened bottles. I keep my unopened bottles in a cabinet underneath the counter because those bottles haven't had the opportunity to tell a story yet. And so they're not, they don't belong on my cabinet. And what I mean by that is this, we have a bottle of wild turkey father and son that if you've been a follower of my channel, I've mentioned it quite a few times, you know, the backstory of it, but real briefly, I'll dive into it real quick. Um, my dad and I started getting into bourbon together about two and a half years ago. We went on a trip to Kentucky um, and it became a real uh, a sort of father son thing between the two of us. And my grandfather knew that and... Uh, Jimmy Russell and his dad, his dad came out of retirement to do a collaboration uh, called The Father and Son, where they both worked on it. And my grandfather had bought that bottle for us and didn't tell us. And it showed up on my doorstep three days after he died. And so while the bottle is just, eh, it's, you know, it's not, I would never go out and buy that bottle. It's, you know, it's, it's a whatever drinking bourbon. But that story, the reason why it's so special is why it's it belongs on the top shelf of, of my display. And my cousin immediately asked me what it was doing on my top shelf along with all of these other really nice bourbons. And so I told him the story. And he said, you know, that's what makes you different than all of the collectors that I know in Kentucky. What makes you different is that you're not displaying stuff because of its monetary value or because it's, it's it's clout or because of its name recognition. You're displaying stuff because of the stories that mean something to you, he said. And that's something that you should be shouting from the rooftops because for me, the bourbon industry is, is a familial industry, but it's, a, it's an industry of passion. You don't go into bourbon because... It's just something that you have to go into. You go into it because you're incredibly passionate about the subject. You're incredibly passionate about the experience. It's a family thing that's been passed down over generations. Or you just really enjoy it. You know, it's... And that's something that needs to be embraced and talked about. Especially right now when bourbon is becoming so... So big. So mainstream. It's really in right now. And... I want to make sure that that what is becoming a development in the bourbon world, what makes bourbon bourbon is not lost on everybody that's starting to enjoy it. And him coming over, my cousin coming over and seeing my collection and immediately understanding what makes my collection, my experience, my tastings unique meant, meant so much to me for a number of reasons but when I put on tastings for people you know when people hire me to do tastings or when I go to events and do tastings I'm not bringing a bottle of Maker's Mark I'm not bringing a bottle of Woodford Reserve I'm not bringing the stuff that everybody knows I'm bringing stuff that it's going to elicit curiosity that's going to that's going to spark passion that's going to make people want to go and explore further and I don't think that there's another or better way of describing it than that for me bourbon is really something that should inspire and should create passion and one of the things that makes bourbon so special is the creativity that goes into it the constant evolving the constant quest for something new something better something that that creates an emotional response when you drink it i mean the first time that i tried the stag the george t stag the 2019 it 
it was an emotional experience for me. And I can't explain to you why. I can't even put into words what that experience was like. But it was an emotional experience for me because it was something I had been looking forward to for such a long time. And that's the sort of impact that I think the community, the the industry has on people that are so passionate about this subject. And being able to see my cousin and being able to share with him why it was so important to me as somebody that's been in bourbon, lived in Kentucky for, you know, 35 non-consecutive years like he has, that is, that is so entrenched in the culture even before it was popular, for him to be able to immediately understand why it was important to me and what what I was doing, what I was trying to accomplish was was incredibly validating. And I wanted to share that with all of you so you can feel the the same way. And, you know, hopefully you find something that you're incredibly passionate about as well. But if you're listening to this and you've made it this far in the video, then bourbon, I'm sure, is something that's passionate for you as well. And I hope that you discover new things that bring you joy in the bourbon world, whether it's a $15 bottle that you find at the supermarket or it's a $3,000 bottle that you buy at auction. If I can share one piece is that the memories that you build drinking that bourbon with somebody are going to be infinitely more valuable than the money you spent on the bottle. And bourbon, unlike a lot of other alcohols, as an example, like wine, it's meant to be enjoyed. It's meant to drink. And it's meant to share with people. And it's not meant to sit on a shelf and be a, and be a collector's item. And if there's one thing that I can pass on is that enjoy those experiences and remember to drink it responsibly but to enjoy it and to drink it and to share it with those around you. So that's my little uh, expose into my bourbon life in the past couple of days. So as always, please like, subscribe, follow, and as always, enjoy, drink safely, and bye for now.